Predators can be found all over the world and come in many different forms. Some are humans looking to exploit others for personal gain, while others are animals that rely on their ability to hunt in order to survive. When a young woman was violently killed in 1994, it was assumed that she was attacked by a great white shark, quite possibly the most feared animal in the ocean. But is it possible that her real killer lives on dry land, hiding in plain sight? Let's uncover the suspicious death of Michelle von Emster. Hello and welcome to the 35th episode of Uncover True Crime Podcast. My name is Stephanie and each week we uncover a different unsolved true crime case ranging from missing persons, unsolved murders, Jane and John Doe's and suspicious deaths. You can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher and other podcast streaming apps as well as on YouTube by searching Uncover True Crime. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Uncover underscore pod, on Instagram at Uncover True Crime pod and you can join the Uncover True Crime discussion group on Facebook. But without any further ado, let's uncover the suspicious death of Michelle Von Empster. Michelle was born in 1969 and was one of five daughters. She grew up in San Carlos, California and graduated from Notre Dame High School in 1986. She then studied at nearby St. Mary's College but was forced to put all her future plans on hold when she was diagnosed with leukaemia. Michelle was a fighter though and after undergoing radiation treatment, she entered remission in 1992. After her battle with cancer, she moved from one friend's house to another before finally settling at 4999 Muir Avenue in Ocean Beach with her flatmate and friend Coco Campbell. She worked at Rumours Coffee Shop close to her home, but handed in her notice after she suspected she was being stalked by a male customer who would ride to the coffee shop in a motorcycle. She soon started working at the Cabrillo's stationery and office supply store in hopes that changing her routine and place of employment would help shake off her stalker. I don't know if this worked, but any relief that she had from being stalked was short-lived as she died in 1994, aged just 24 years old. Michelle was last seen alive on the 14th of April 1994. That night, she and her flatmate Coco were meant to attend a Pink Floyd concert at the Jack Murphy stadium but when they arrived they were turned away because their tickets were not for that night's show. I don't know if the tickets they had were for a show maybe the next night or possibly the night before but it does seem bizarre that they wouldn't have known this prior to arriving at the stadium. I'm not sure exactly what time they were turned away but at around 8pm the girls decided to go home. Coco said that Michelle was very down around this time but it's very possible that this was because her plans had been changed last minute or she could have had something else on her mind as she asked Coco to drop her off at the beach on Sunset Cliffs, which was around a 40 minute walk from their apartment. Michelle didn't say why she wanted to be dropped off at Sunset Cliffs, but Coco agreed and dropped her off anyway, and this was the last confirmed time that Michelle was seen alive. The next day, at 3pm, her body was found in some kelp beds a few hundred yards from the shore. She had extensive injuries and her right leg had been amputated at the thigh and the bone was sharpened to a point. There was large pieces of her skin missing, her neck, pelvis and ribs were all broken and she had several cuts and abrasions on her face. She was naked when she was discovered and the clothes she was wearing the night before have never been found but her purse was. It was found by a couple walking down the more busier end of the beach and everything inside was intact including her wallet, ID and the $27 she had had in her purse. Her purse was found around a half mile from where her body was discovered and we to this day still don't know why they were so far apart. It's possible that she had just dropped it earlier on in the night and hadn't noticed, but several people believe that it was planted there closer to the time that it was found by the couple as that was an area of the beach that had a lot of foot traffic and it probably would have been turned in or stolen well before 8 o'clock that night if it had been there all day. Michelle's body wasn't in good condition when found and she wasn't identified straight away. It wasn't until police put out an appeal for information a few days later that her boss recognised Michelle's description and knew it was her, in particular due to a very distinctive butterfly tattoo that she had on her right shoulder. 
The autopsy was performed by Dr. Brian Blackburn at the San Diego Lifeguard Headquarters the day after Michelle's body was found. It was thought that she had gone into the water at around 12am the day that she was found and her cause of death was listed as blood loss secondary to drowning. There was sand found in her mouth, throat, lungs and stomach, which Dr. Blackburn said was inhaled by Michelle during the attack as she was gasping for air, meaning that she would have been alive when most of her injuries were inflicted. Dr. Blackburn believed that Michelle was attacked by a shark, but had never actually seen a death by shark attack before, so he consulted experts at the Scripps Institute for Oceanology, but they never actually saw the body for themselves. Regardless, he was satisfied that she was indeed killed by a great white shark, and he listed the manner of death as an accident and the case was closed. Now let's talk about all the things that are wrong with this theory. According to this theory, Michelle went into the water naked for a swim at midnight and was attacked by a shark while she was in the water. The first issue with this is that the water that night would have been around 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a bit cold to be swimming in. While one of her friends did say that Michelle enjoyed skinny dipping, a detail which we will come back to a bit later, this theory doesn't explain why none of her clothes were ever found. Around 10 different species of shark live off the coast of San Diego, but shark attacks in the area are very rare and there have only been 19 shark related deaths in the area since 1926. While this alone doesn't definitely rule out the shark theory, it does make it a lot less likely. Rab Collier, who is one of the leading experts on shark attacks and the founder and president of the Shark Research Committee, disagrees that Michelle was killed by a shark and cited her amputated leg and the sand in her lungs as proof, saying, quote, When a white shark bites off part of a limb, the cut is clean, almost like when you put a hand with a saw. What was left of Michelle's femur was anything but a shark attack. It seems like what happens when you get a piece of bamboo and reduce it to a point with a knife. I have seen about a hundred photos of cases I have reviewed over the years and I have never seen any bone that reached this point. The damage would have cut off her femoral artery and she would have bled out quickly, but to have sand in her stomach, she would have had to breathe deeply when she made contact with the sand. In this case, there are too many things that are not consistent with the behaviour of white sharks." Unquote. Harry Bonnell, who was the Chief Deputy Medical Examiner of San Diego County when Michelle died, also didn't agree with her cause of death, stating, quote, Sand is never seen in the lungs of drowning victims. They are not at the bottom inhaling sand. They are at the top thrashing about, unquote. Richard Rosenblatt, the Chairman of the Scripps Institute of Technology, also doesn't believe that Michelle's injuries were consistent with a shark attack, as it is unusual for a shark to hunt at night. Quote, this was not great white shark behaviour to hunt at night. They come up from the bottom and aim at a silhouette of a seal in daylight. The smoking gun would have been to have found a white shark tooth broken off somewhere on the body. Unquote. Glenn Wagner, who is currently the chief medical examiner of San Diego, reopened Michelle's case in 2008 and he found that sharks probably did feed off of Michelle's body after she died, but I don't know if he officially changed her cause or manner of death, so I don't know if our case is even open. However, the global shark attack file have made their stance on Michelle's death very clear. This database has logged every known, suspected and questionable shark attack that has occurred globally since 1555 and Michelle's case is not listed on there, not even as a questionable attack. I think there is plenty of contradictory evidence to cast doubt on this theory, so let's discuss other possibilities, and as with all theories we discuss on this podcast, they are all pure speculation. The first is that Michelle was the victim of foul play, but who would want to kill her? The first suspect is the man that Michelle suspected of stalking her. According to Michelle's boss at the office supply shop, a man came in the day after Michelle died and made several copies of her autopsy report. And guess what he apparently wrote to the shop? You guessed it, a motorcycle. While this does sound promising, I couldn't find a physical description of this man and in my opinion there are a few issues with this account. First, 
The autopsy wasn't concluded until the day after Michelle was found, and while I don't know how long it takes to write an autopsy report, having never written one, I am almost certain it wouldn't be written the same day the examination took place. But even if it was, how would this man have had access to it so quickly? Also, Michelle wasn't definitively identified until days after her autopsy, so how would her boss know that the autopsy report the man was copying was Michelle's? But let's say she got the date wrong. Maybe it was a week or so after Michelle died. I don't know if she claims to have actually spoken to this man. If someone came into a shop that I managed and made several copies of one of my former employees' autopsy report, I'm pretty sure that would warrant some kind of conversation. It's totally possible that this detail has been exaggerated or grown arms and legs over the years in order to sensationalise this story, but there is something about it that just doesn't make sense to me, although that is only my personal opinion. A second possible suspect is a man called Edwin Decker, who says that he went on a date with Michelle two days before she died, something that he has spoken about in great detail on his online blog. While the choice of language and the decision to reveal the details that he did is in very poor taste, that is nothing compared to the poem he wrote about her death, quote, A butterfly on her shoulder, which I remembered that night, on my couch when I, like the shark, chewed on her lips and took off her shirt." Unquote. Edwin now says that he regrets writing these blog posts and that poem, and I should hope so because it might possibly be the creepiest thing I have ever read. But remember earlier how I mentioned that one of Michelle's friends said that she liked swimming naked? Guess who that was? Edwin. This seems to imply that he believes that she went into the water herself and was indeed killed by a great white, however he has also stated online that he doesn't believe she was killed by a shark and wants the case reopened. An odd thing to do if you had something to do with her death, but I don't think this rules him out completely either. He has never forgotten about Michelle and spoke on his online blog about the emotional and intellectual connection he feels that they shared on their one date, and while I would insert some quotes from his blog posts to illustrate exactly how he felt about her. In my opinion, they are very creepy and I really don't want to, so they will be in my list of sources if you want to read it for yourself. From what I read though, it seems as though his feelings for her were very intense, but we have no way of knowing if she felt the same way. Is it possible that she went to the beach to meet him that night, called off their romance and he got angry and killed her? Possibly. But again, this is all speculation and I am by no means accusing him of this, but he doesn't come across very well in my opinion either. Other than foul play, there are a couple more theories I quickly want to touch on. One is that she went swimming in the water and somehow got into a boating accident and was injured as her body got caught in the propeller. This would explain why one of her legs was amputated and the bone was pointed, and it also would account for quite a lot of her other injuries. If this is true, the people on the boat wouldn't have been expecting anyone to be swimming in the water so late at night in such cold temperatures, but once they realised that Michelle had been injured and died, they tried to cover it up out of fear or sheer panic. If this is really what happened, her death was still covered up and that is a crime, even if it was an accident. The second theory is that she fell off the cliffs at the beach. This does explain her broken bones and the abrasions on her face, but not why she was naked, why her clothes were never found, and how this fall could have cut off her leg in the way that it did. There are probably way more theories out there than the ones that I have gone over today, so please let me know on Twitter, Instagram, or maybe in the comments on the YouTube video, if you have any other theories on what happened to Michelle. Like so many of the cases we uncover on this podcast, there is a lot about this case that doesn't quite add up, no matter what theory you believe in, and all we can do is try to spread awareness to her case and hope that one day the truth about Michelle's mysterious death will come to light. As I said earlier, I don't know the status of this case or if her cause and manner of death have been officially changed, but if you have any information about Michelle's death or the circumstances surrounding it, I still urge you to call the San Diego Police Department on 619-531-2000 or you can call 
3154. All photos and sources related to this case can be found on our website, uncovertruecrimepodcast.co.uk. That's everything I have for you today. Thank you for listening to the very end. Please stay safe and have a good night.